Vaccination rates have slowed significantly this month, but there's hope that could turn around after Health Canada approved Moderna today as a safe vaccine for children 12 and older. And there's also word the province is going to announce a vaccine certificate plan next week. Experts also believe that will help increase the number of people who roll up their sleeves. To talk more about the implications and the impact on this fourth wave, we are pleased to welcome back to CP24 tonight infectious diseases specialist from McMaster Children's Hospital, Dr. Martha Fulford, along with family physician and founder of Kid Crew, Dr. Dina Kulik. Thank you both for making time for CP24 tonight. Uh, Dr. Fulford, what do you make of the Moderna approval and also word that there might be a vaccine passport coming for Ontario? Two separate questions, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the Moderna, it's, uh, it's the second M mRNA vaccine, so very similar to the Pfizer. Uh, the study that they did was, uh, it, it included 3,732 to be exact teenagers. Uh, and they, uh, in the group that was vaccinated for, uh, sorry, in the placebo group, four got COVID. In the vaccinated group, nobody did. The trials are a little bit different in kids because they can't really do them for uh, severe disease because it's so uncommon. So th what the studies show that were very effective, that the kids get a really good immune response. And it's, you know, in the study, uh, the kids who were vaccinated, none of them got COVID, as I say, compared to the four. So it gives us one more option for, for youth uh, who, who would like to be vaccinated. It's a little bit easier to give in some ways because the Pfizer requires reconstitution. So it's a little bit more fiddly uh, to set up and give. And the Moderna, you can draw straight out of the vial. So it, particularly in areas where people might not be as comfortable with the reconstitution or in certain settings, the Moderna might actually be easier to give. So I, I think it just gives us that one more option. Mm -hmm. The vaccine passport one is a tough one to answer because, of course, we don't know what's going to entail. Um, so for me, whenever I think of uh, something like this, what I really want to know is what is our objective. And I, I'm not trying to be funny when I say that. So presumably the short-term goal is to, to stop as much transmission as possible in high-risk settings with a long-term goal to have enough immunity in our population that we don't require any restrictions anymore. And that's clearly the end point of all of this. Uh, we're already seeing that in Europe. For example, Denmark has announced today that in two weeks they're stopping all COVID restrictions because uh, they've decided that they're at a stage with over 80% vaccination that uh, COVID is no longer, and how they worded it, was a socially critical disease in Denmark. Mm -hmm. That is our end point. So if, I, if we have a passport, I, I would like to see the objectives uh, and I'd like to see a time frame. Uh, because there should be a goal, there should be an end point to this. And the end point is, of course, COVID becoming uh, an endemic uh, respiratory illness that we can coexist with. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kulik, let's talk to you because I'm sure at your clinic, or uh, your practice, pardon me, there must be parents talking to you about the idea of maybe taking Moderna on some point. Now we know it's been approved. What do you think the reaction is going to be like? I think more options is great. A lot of our patients yeah. who are 12 and older have already received one of the vaccines, the Pfizer vaccine. I don't know of a lot of our patients at Kid Crew that haven't yet received an mRNA vaccine who wanted one, who were waiting for Moderna, but it gives more options. We've had you know, shortages in the past, so having more options is a good thing as we move forward and hopefully get more and more people vaccinated. Yeah. Dr. Kulik, I'm thinking of those parents who may have been apprehensive or have questions about vaccinating their children 12 and up. And with Pfizer being the one option now with Moderna, as you say, having more options, do you think that would offer more reassurances to those families to get more kids in this province vaccinated? I think so. I mean, more studies, more vaccine options. Yeah. I think parents will have more confidence that there's been more studies on these two different vaccines now that show that not only are they effective at preventing illness and severe illness and death, but also they are safe. So more evidence, more data makes people feel more comfortable. Dr. Fulford, you know, a lot of people are going to be sending their children back to school who aren't even 12 yet, who therefore are not eligible to get the vaccine. How do you see the concerns or risks here of kids going back to school? Yes, they will be cohorted. Yes, they will be masked. But what is your assessment as parents are perhaps wondering, you know, in the next two weeks or so, what's this going to mean to my children who are unvaccinated with the Delta variant rising and spreading? Yeah, this is uh, one of those situations where I keep saying to people, let's just take a deep breath and take a step back. Delta is unquestionably more transmissible, which means that we have a much larger denominator. It isn't from what we're actually seeing, and, and this is uh, across all of Europe and the countries that have had all their Delta waves, actually 
uh, sh- worse for kids that we're seeing. It's just that the denominator is bigger. And I, I was looking up the numbers for Florida the other day because those are the, the big headlines about the, the hospitals are, are being overwhelmed. And this was about a week ago, but they had 179 children admitted to the hospitals. But that's with a denominator of over 4 million kids. So again, it's that perspective. So I, I, COVID is a direct uh, problem for young children. Fortunately, that remains that, that the kids don't get severely sick. Not that they don't get COVID, but that they're extremely unlikely to have a bad outcome. And what we have seen uh, that in countries that have very high vaccination rates of adults, this actually results in lower COVID across the board, including in children. And these are even uh, some of the countries that have elected not to even vaccinate teenagers. And so if we're worried about our kids, which obviously we all want our kids to to have the best possible school experience that they can, vaccinate the adults around them. Mm -hmm. I'm less worried about the children being vaccinated. I'm more worried about ensuring that all the adults, both for their own protection And even though the vaccines don't fully uh, stop all transmission, they definitely shorten the period of transmission, that the single most important thing we can do for our kids is actually have all the adults vaccinated and and reduce the amount of transmission in the community as far as possible. We do that, our kids are going to be fine in school. Dr. Kulik, we're pretty close to schools starting again in September. What are the conversations you've been having with families? Families are really stressed. They are. It looks different than September last year. The numbers are higher and parents have this significant fear about the Delta strain being that it's more transmissible. But myself, like Dr. Colford, I counsel my parents the exact same way. We have to have a lot of cases to have enough kids that actually get very sick with it. Kids get COVID, they absolutely do. But if we keep the community level low, only a small proportion of those people that get COVID will be children. A much smaller proportion get severe illness, and almost none of those will actually die, less than 0.1%. So if we keep the overall numbers low, our kids will remain healthy and safe. So, Dr. Fulford, when we hear what you just said, what Dr. Kulik just said, and when it comes to, you know, the main fear of parents beyond their children, of course, getting sick with COVID potentially, is the idea of schools closing down again. Can you see, as vaccination rates were around 77% double vaxxed here in Ontario, can you see that happening again? Or can you see that with the trends you're noticing around the world, that that the situation should be a little more reassuring for parents in the next couple of weeks? I think they, I actually think it would be, utterly and completely inexcusable if schools closed again. We have to remember it was only Ontario that did this. Uh, so we already know that schools can, can be set, kept open. But we can look at Europe and again, UK, um, Switzerland, Sweden, Denmark, the Netherlands, who have all had really high Delta spikes, have kept their schools open the entire time. And even more reassuring is that some of the schools, for example, the UK, had stopped all, well, actually a lot of them have no masking of young children. In fact, I don't think any uh, jurisdiction in Europe has masked uh, kids under the age of 12. And so we know that even in those settings with really high Delta spikes, that schools were not the hubs of transmission. They can certainly reflect what's going on in the community. But But when we think of our kids also, we have to think of health as more than just COVID. Health, I mean, it's the world health definition. It's a state of physical, social, mental well-being, and it's not just the absence of disease. Our hospitals are not full of children with COVID. Our our hospitals, uh, what we're seeing is the collateral damage. And so when we go forward and we think of schools, we want to do what's absolutely best for our children in all aspects of their health. And we know that we've done profound harm to a great number of children with, with the closures and the social isolation. So schools should not be closed. It is the responsibility of, uh, of the adults to be vaccinated, to ensure that we avoid high risk uh, situations, to make sure that we do everything we can to keep the situation under control. Because once we have that vaccination rate and we no longer have that surge into our hospitals, much of what we're doing would no longer be necessary. And this is an important uh, mindset for everybody that we're not getting rid of COVID. We're moving from pandemic to endemic to manageable to being one of the respiratory viruses that we coexist with. But it is a challenging few months. I think people are worried and and Mm -hmm. all we can do is just keep reassuring and and doing our part by doing things like getting vaccinated. And participating in these valuable conversations. Thank you both so much for making time for CP24 tonight. Dr. Thank you. And Dr. Dina Kulik. Thank you.